Oh my God, there is nothing like busting somebody on live television. It's delicious. It's lovely. It's amazing. In Florida, a Republican congresswoman was thoroughly embarrassed by lying. Maria Elvira Salazar was trying to take credit for infrastructure money coming to her district. Well, Jim DeFeet of CBS Miami Station, he was having none of it. And my man took it to her with some basic fundamental facts. This, y'all, is glorious. Last month, you were at FIU and you presented a check for $650,000 to help small businesses at FIU. But you voted against the bill that gave the money that you then signed a check for and handed and had a photo op, the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023, right? You voted against that bill. I, I, right now, you have to give me more details, but I do know that every time I have an opportunity to bring money to my constituents, I do so. I well, just you remember, four, you, I just did four hundred thousand dollars. But look, well, let's you, go. but you voted against you voted against the Chips and Science Act, right? Listen, I, right now I need to I need to ask my staff. But you know, what do no, we look you, at you the forty million dollars that I have brought to this community? No, what's, what's, Aren't you proud of me? Aren't you proud of the forty million dollars that I brought? Much, but how Aren't much? you proud that I wrote the Dignity Act? Haven't I? Let's talk about the America's wait, Act. Wait, 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 Mark, let me one second. Tell me, the money that you talk about, the forty million dollars that you bring back to the district. Sometimes that money comes from bills that you voted against. You voted against the CHIPS Act, and yet you praise the fact that the South Florida Climate Resilience Tech Hub is going to be started in Miami, right? You voted against the infrastructure bill, and you talk about all the money that comes back to the airport. So at the same time that you're taking credit for the money that you bring back to the district, in Washington, you're voting against these projects on party line votes. Listen, I that was I think last cycle. I cannot really remember right now, but just uh, look, be, let, let's look at the America's Act, which is what I'm going to vote. So you don't want to explain why I, you I vote really against cannot, things. I mean, right now, and I'm not trying to be a politician. Is so many bills that I've introduced that I know that no, no, many these are of bills them that you I've voted against. The, that I understand, and but they, it's, it's okay. Sometimes I vote bills. and sometimes I don't. But let's look at the positive. Let's look at the forty million dollars that I brought. Um, I'm not trying to be a politician. It's so many bills I've introduced. Boom. Introducing a bill is not passing a bill. It's not voting for a bill. And I love, oh, I, 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 I need to consult my staff. You forgot what the hell you voted for and against? No. What this is, is Republicans in this country lying and trying to take credit for things that they were against. Same thing happened under President Obama. That first stimulus bill, oh, they voted against it, but were then begging for projects to be funded. No, you don't get no credit for that. Then how does it work? This is how they operate. Transportation, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg of the Department of Transportation. Same thing happened. He called out Speaker Mike Johnson. People who voted against it show up at ribbon cuttings and stuff. Oh, and how? I mean, none other than the Speaker of the House. I couldn't believe it, it was Monday or Tuesday. Toured an airport project that, that, I, that I signed off on. Uh, with a local member of Congress, and neither that local member nor he had voted for the funding that we're using to build the thing. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's many things you could say about that, but one thing you could say about that is it must be a really great project. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, let me remind y'all and pull a picture back up, Representative Maria Salazar. This is the same trifling woman who would not let Congresswoman Barbara Lee speak during the hearing about Cuba. 
This is where I have said Democrats every single time one of these projects are unveiled and they have talked about the funding. This is where the Democrats should have signs saying, thanks, Joe. Thanks, Kamala. No thanks to Republican congressman or senator so-and-so. That's how they should be responding to these folks bragging about money that they opposed and they want to make it seem like they got it done. My panel uh, joining me right now, I want to introduce them right now. Uh, Dr. Julian Malvo, President Emerita, Bennett College, economist and author, joining me out of D.C. Dr. Amakongo Dabinga, uh, Senior Professorial Lecturer, School of International Service, American University. Renita Shannon, former Georgia State Representative uh, out of Atlanta. Renita, I'll start with you. You're a former uh, state rep. I mean, th this to me is beyond hypocrisy uh, mm -hmm. to just be champion. And oh, my God, these things are wonderful. And I brought back 40 billion dollars. No, your punk ass didn't. You ain't bring back nothing. That was money that was sent there because Democrats voted for it and you did. Right. And I'm sure that she in her mind knew that she did not vote for the Consolidated Appropriations Act, which is really just a fancy name for the budget. But to be fair, for representatives, it is totally possible for you to forget how you voted for, uh, voted on something. And it's possible for you to fight for something and then have to vote for it later. But and, and, and the way that that happens is because most bills are a combination of sugar and poison, meaning there's some good things in it that you like, but then there could be some poison pill in it that you're just not willing to vote for. And this happens a lot of times when you're voting on a budget because there's so many line items. There's so many things in it that are both a mix of good and bad. But here's the reason why I'm certain that she knew what her voting record was, because Republicans have made a pattern over the last decade or so of always voting against anything that goes for money to actually help people on the ground. So if I were sitting there, and of course I can't remember every single vote that I have taken, I know my overall patterns, patterns. And just like when I served in the General Assembly, a lot of times I did vote against the budget because the Democrats were in the minority and the Republicans were always passing these large budgets that were almost always spending all the money on incarceration and growing the police state. So. It's like you said, Roland, I feel certain that she knows that she did not vote for this. She just thought that the reporter was not going to be smart enough to catch her on it and not going to check her on it. And she thought she was going to get away with it. And that did not happen. But, but, but this right here on the Congo is the problem with most. And, and I'm going to say this a lot of journalists. OK, a lot of these people we see on television, on radio, they are not smart. They don't do any research. They don't double check. And so and even some of these national shows, they allow these politicians to come on those shows, lie, make claims and don't push back. Just like when we called out Senator Tim Scott for going on Fox News and lying by saying, oh, President, President Donald Trump uh, has done more for HBCUs than any other president in history. His ass was lying. And these <laughs> folks, and look, we know what's going to happen on Fox News. Fox News, they will let people lie. But what Jim DeFee did here, what every journalist should do is like, uh, hold up, let's run this back. Yo, I yeah. guess didn't vote for it. It was a masterclass. I, I, I loved it. And I'm telling you, Roland, time and time again on all of these networks throughout the last, particularly once Trump came into, you know, being in, you know, 2016 or 2015 or whatever, I get so angry at the journalists or so-called journalists, or let's just call them hosts, I, I guess, because they don't act like journalists who don't do their job who don't press the issue, who let these guys get up there and run whatever they want to say because they're afraid that if they challenge somebody like a Trump or Ron DeSantis or somebody like that, they won't get access to them later. That's not your job as a journalist, to be some type of sniffling coward who's only concerned about ratings or not becoming some type of social media post. You're supposed to get up there and do your job. As the great Joe Madison said, your, your, your next question is supposed to be based on the last answer. You know, you don't just let people run with their talking points. And I'll see people like Ron 
Ron DeSantis, I like Morning Joe, or I'll see this person on, on CNN and the like, and they just talk. They pivot back to whatever it is that they want to talk about with no follow-up questions. And I honestly believe, Roland, that if we had somebody, more people who did like what you do or like what Jim DeFee did here, some of these candidates would not be able to rise to the, to, to the levels that they have been because they would have been embarrassed out of being able to assume their positions. But that is the problem now. We have these people, got these platforms. And I'll be quite honest, also, this is one of the challenges I have with these politicians who are very selective about the black host or black targeted media that they engage in. You know, people know that if they go on like the Breakfast Club or something like that, they're either not going to get hardball questions or there's not a great deal of institutional knowledge there to be able to really be able to push back. And so we have to be targeted. And, and it's not about dissing anybody. It's about, like you said, basic journalistic principles and challenging people on things that they are outright lying about. People, sh nobody should look at that as a diss or a slam. It's about doing your job. And in this day and age with AI, and, 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 you know, deep fakes and robocalls, if you fake robocalls and the like, there's more misinformation and disinformation than facts. So journalists should use this as a prime opportunity right now to dig down deeper into doing their job and exposing many of these politicians and others types of folks for the liars that they are. So thank you, Jim. But thank you also, Roland, because interview after interview, you don't let anybody get away with anything. And that's why I think some of these guys are terrified of coming on your show, because here, Facts matter. Oh, abs yeah, absolutely. And 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 Julian, I get some of these people. They stop me. And they like, man. And they they say send me emails, and they pull me. And I wish mean, you wouldn't interrupt people so much. Guess what? <laughs> I didn't just interrupt Renita. I didn't just interrupt Omicongo. You know why? Cause they didn't lie. See, what they want is they want me to let folk come on here and lie. And then the liars go, you're not going to let me finish. Yes, you're correct. I'm not going to let you finish telling a lie. And that's what Jim defeat. He nailed And she was like, can we just accentuate the positive? What was, what was that song? <laughs> uh, it was a song, right? Uh, she's like, why can't you just accentuate the positive? Why you can't bring all that stuff up? No. That was something. That was, she was saying. She was literally like, I, 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 I've done some good stuff. You can't talk about the good stuff I've done. That's forty million dollars. No, boo. Let's talk about where that forty million came from. You know, first of all, that was like she was like one of the stupidest people that I've seen on air in a very long time. Literally, for a number of reasons. First of all, I'm not trying to be a politician. Yes, the f you are. I mean, seriously, I'm not trying to be a politician. Where did that come from? You were there because you're a politician. You're telling lies because you're a politician. So to say, I'm not trying to be a politician, what you trying to be? Uh, Annie Oakley? Uh, Alfalfa? You know, from the... Well, anyway, let me not go there. So first of all, she was out of order, out of line, out of control. Secondly, the brother did a great job in nailing her on everything. And that's really important. That he did. But what's even more important, Roland, is that you have lifted her up and said you is a bloody liar because that's what she is. The third thing that I think is really important here is the extent to which the Biden administration has not jumped on stuff like this. I mean, what we know about the Biden administration, frankly, is that they have not done their work in publicizing what they've done. When this person claimed that she did $40 million, which, number one, she did not do, but when she claimed she did it, there should have been a Biden response that said, this came from this legislation that came from this administration. I am dis disturbed that the Biden administration does not do enough to jump on these liars and call them on their nonsense. If he did that, and I don't know why they don't, but if he did that, what we would have is a different kind of narrative. What you have is these people running around saying, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. And you don't have the president who ought to, or his team ought to be saying, excuse me, Miss Thing, but you didn't do spit. And this is why it happened. So the interviewer was on point. You don't get very many who are, many on CNN and 
other places, let these people spin their their nonsense, and it's wrong. He did not let her spin her nonsense, but she talked over him and she tried to be cute. Can you give me credit? Oh, hell no. Credit for what? Credit for lying? You know, so, but, but secondly, the administration, if they want to win in 2024, have to do a much better job in putting their stuff out there. Every time one of these lies comes out, somebody, it doesn't have to be the president, but there's a surrogate in Florida who should say, oh, hell no. And that's the bottom line is when will the Biden administration step up, step out and make it clear and make it plain that these people are taking credit for work he did that they voted against? Well, I, I, again, they got to get far more aggressive calling these people out. Uh, and look, they, go, they, they are going to lie. That's what they do. But they got to get <laughs> gut checked.